Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be painting up a Blade Guard Ancient, or just basically a Primaris Standard Bear. Now I've already gotten ahead to the part where I've assembled fully, uh, maybe too fully, I mean, it gets in the way of painting, not, uh, looking back. I've already textured all the armor in the usual steps and I have primed the entire model. So moving on, starting with the coat of Iron Breaker, we're going to place this all over the armor on the model. And now using Abaddon Black and Nuln Oil, we're going to use it in a one to one mix and we're going to coat the entire armor with it. Use a little water inside just to give it, make it a little more runny, but this is what we're going to coat our armor with. And then going back to Iron Breaker, we then do a light dry brushing on all the edges of the black armor. I go back with the wash we created and touch up a few areas that are just uh, too bright and silvery. And then with Rhinox Hide and Iron Breaker, I'm going to paint the belt. I'm going to start with Rhinox Hide and use it to paint the belt. And once that is done, I'm going to do the buckle and the little metal pieces of the belt with Iron Breaker. Although looking back, I should have saved this step till later. And now with Rakarth Flesh, Agrax Earthshade, and Screaming Skull, we're going to attempt to paint the cloak. I'm going to start with a layer of Rakarth Flesh. I then give it a coat of Agrax Earthshade to darken and fill in the recesses. I then go back over with Rakarth Flesh to highlight around 90% of the cloak. We only want the deepest recesses with the Irex Earthshade showing. Once that is done, we go back and apply another coat of Agrax Earthshade. In the end, it just doesn't look good. The sh This shading method has too much of a stark contrast, so I'm going to scrap it. I go back to the part where I paint the entire coat in, or the cloak in Rakarth Flesh. With technical contrast medium, after painting it in Rakarth Flesh, I then use a one-to-one -one with Contrast Medium and uh, Agrax Earthshade over the Rakarth Flesh. I then highlight again with the uh, Rakarth Flesh, doing like 90 to 95 percent of the entire cloak. I then apply a second layer of 1 to 1 Agrax Earthshade and Contrast Medium. I then highlight further with Rakarth Flesh again, trying to get like eh, 70 to 80% of the model covered. I then decide that this just sucks, it's just not looking good, so I'm gonna have to bite the bullet and go old school. With Baneblade Brown, Rakarth Flesh, and Screaming Skull, I... I'm gonna have to bite the bullet and do this the old-fashioned way, layer by layer. We start off with a coat 
Rakarth flesh because I already repainted the cloak it, but then we fill in all the recesses with the Bane Blade Brown. Once that is done, we do a one-to-one -one Bane Blade Brown and Rakarth Flesh and we highlight around 90% of the cloak it. Only the deepest, darkest recesses will have the cloak, or the Bane Blade Brown pure color. And then with pure Rakarth flesh, we highlight all the edges and stuff, and maybe like 60 to 70% of the entire model, and we flutter the base of the cloak with like simple brush strokes down. And with two parts Rakarth flesh to one part Screaming Skull, I then highlight the model again, focusing on the upper half raised areas, the edges, and like maybe 50-40% of the cloak's body. Use your own judgment, but you always want to try to paint the, the parts that are more north, upper, than south. And then with one-to-one -one Rakarth Flesh and Screaming Skull, because Screaming Skull is too bright, I then highlight all the edges, the most raised areas, like maybe 20 to 30% of the cloak will receive this coat. And done. Well. When we move on, what we're going to do is we're going to preserve the cloak now because uh, using this many thin layers, it's really easy to scrape off during the painting process, like accidentally bumping and stuff. So with AK Interactive uh, Ultra Matte Varnish, I didn't get the image of it, but we will use this and we will seal in the cloth. Now the one thing about this varnish is it really brings out the cloth texture or leathery look, and so it's going to enhance the appearance of this cloak. And now with Doom Bull Brown and Nolan Oil, we're going to paint the gun holster and ammo packs that the guy has. We're going to start with a simple layer of Doom Bull Brown. Then we're going to coat the whole thing in Nolan Oil. And then with Thin Down Doom Bull Brown, Thin Down with Water, we're going to paint the edges and they're the Nolan Oil has created some parts that have more shading than other along the flat part, and so we will be painting these little highlighted or raised areas in the model, just to add more like flavor and texture on the gun holster. I like the way it looks as it is, so I will not do the process again and again to build up more layers. It looks good. And now with Fenrisian Grey and Abaddon Black and White Scar, we're going to paint the White Black Templar symbols. We're going to paint the shoulder pads, his right elbow pad, and the center of his backpack with Fenrisian Grey. Alright, now round four with this stupid uh, calligraphy thing. I'm going to take a micro pen, point to 25 millimeters, and I'm going to try to mark off waypoints for the Black Templar Cross. I am out of all the transfer sheets. I have none left. There are none. There are no Black Templar images or logos on the transfer sheet that the Indominus box set gives. This is a massive oversight. I complain to the highest managers on this. Alright, since I'm using the Chaos Black and the Fenrisian Grey, Fenrisian Grey can easily uh, cover up the black, so I'm constantly going back and forth on straightening the lines with the Abaddon Black and then fixing them up with the Fenrisian Grey. So this is a really a back and forth of trying to get this logo uh, symmetrical and fine. I ended up making this logo larger. I, I just didn't notice because I didn't use another logo as a cross-reference. 
but after a long period of time of going back and forth between the two colors, I got it pretty close using thinned down uh, variations of the paints so that they would flow better. And finally, once it was done, I then came back with white scar white and I just coated all the pad and the elbow pad and the backpack with this color. I then go back and grab AK Interactive Ultra Matte and I'm going to use that to cover up the shoulder pad. Now this is going to make the shoulder pad look very dull and matted. Uh, basically make the X look better. It looks really well on transfer sheets, but I want that effect to carry on because I want like symmetry in my army on this subject. And now with Warpstone Green, Snarsnick Green, Beal Tan Green, we're going to paint the eyes. We're going to start off by layering the eyes with Warpstone Glow. Once that is done, we're going to go with Snarsnick Green and fill in the center of the eyes. We want to take very careful brush strokes and get this right. And then we're going to fill the eyes with Beal Tan Green to fix up any mistakes we had. And I did terrible with it uh, this time because this helmet's kind of weird compared to the others. It's like there's a lens within a lens. It kind of messed me up. And once that's done, we're going to go back with Snarsnick Green and basically like tap, 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 tap and make little dots on the eyes. Alright then, with Steel Legion Drab, Bane Blade Brown, Rakarth Flesh, XV88, and Agrax Earthshade, we are going to paint the big skelly on the standard. Apparently, according to what lore is given, they have a dead uh, marine right up on there as their battle standard. I don't know, weirdos. We base layer with Steel Legion Drab. We then highlight with Baneblade Brown like 90% of the bones. Now take note, there are some metal parts on this, so ignore those. And then we highlight with Rakarth Flesh all the edges and the highest raised areas with the bones. On the skull, we're just going to follow the most edgy part of the bones and then just do some little brush strokes on this top of the skull. And now with XV88, we're going to paint the ropes that are on him. Apparently this corpse is tied to this banner with rope. And then we give this sucker a layer of Agrax Earthshade. Once we apply it, we then try to drain it out, uh, ex the excess amounts from certain areas and from the deepest recesses. We want to make sure it applies well on the top of the skull. We want to make sure there's enough to cover, but not enough to completely, like, just blob everywhere. So you want to, like, add and remove until you get, like, a good, uh, fill. And now with Iron Breaker, we're going to go back and apply the metal to all the exhaust ports on the backpack, chains all throughout the uh, body and model. There's also metal parts on the standard that we're going to apply, and basically all over where there's a silver metal -y part, Iron Breaker is what we're going to use for it. And now with Skeleton Horde Contrast and Golem in Flesh Contrast, we're going to use this and we're going to weather the uh, exhaust ports on the backpack. We're going to start off with Skeleton Horde Contrast and coat the entire metal pieces on the backpack with Skeleton Horde Contrast. And once that is done, we're going to selectively fill in like the deepest recesses of the vents with Golem in Flesh. Alright, I forgot to get the image of it, but we're going to use a Vallejo Liquid Gold Bronze. 
and we're going to coat the entire standard and a lot of the metal parts with this bronze color. And now with Vallejo Liquid Gold Old Gold, we're going to then highlight or cover like eh, 80 to 90 percent of all the red we uh, did with this old gold color. And then with Vallejo Liquid Gold gold color, we're going to highlight the edges of the gold pieces, like the higher raised areas, the edges. This is a much lighter gold color, so we're going to basically just do highlights, which is pretty hard because this, this paint is sticky. And you better wash your brushes constantly throughout this process. And then with Vallejo Liquid Silver, we're going to highlight the most raised areas and edges and the spikes that are on the standard and his head. And now with Corn Red, Mephiston Red, Evil Sun Scarlet, we're going to paint all the purity seals, starting with a base of Corn Red. Then once that's done, we're going to coat them all in Mephiston Red, except for the center rings, or like the rings in the center, except for the very center. And then once that's done, we're going to get Evil Sun Scarlet and we're going to highlight the upper 50 to 60% of the ring and a drop in the middle of each. Uh, the ones that have like a skull in them, just like two drops, one on the top of the skull and one on the jaw. Alright then, with Steel Legion Drab, Bane Blade Brown, and Nuln Oil, we are going to do the Purity Seal paper itself. We're going to layer the whole thing in Steel Legion Trap. Be careful not to ruin the cloak, because that took a long time to do. Once that's done, we're going to take the Bane Blade Brown and highlight the edges and do lines right across on the edges or like small parts of the paper. Your choice, but this model actually gives a lot of folds and indents, so you can, you can notice where you shouldn't apply it. And then with Nuln Oil, we add this in to darken it. Now, we want to use Nuln Oil since these colors are very close to the cloak. This is really going to make them stand out when being side by side with the cloak. And then we go back with the Bane Blade Brown and do one more highlight across all the purity seals to make the highest raised area stand out a bit more. And then with Rhinox Hide, we are going to apply it to the stone that's on his base. He, his foot is on a rock, and so we're going to apply Rhinox Hide because we're going to paint it the same way we'd paint the bases. So I've done on previous videos how I've done these bases. So. And then with Iron Breaker, I then paint the long silver shaft of this banner. And then with Mornfang Brown, I then edge the model base. And the reason why I choose Mornfang Brown is because it will help, I guess, pop and be a contrast to the model, the base, and the top part. If it was just like pure black, eh, I don't think it would look as good, or too dark of a color wouldn't look as good, but Mornfang Brown is like a good contrast to the model itself. And then with the Army Painter Anti-Shine Matte Varnish, which also allows metallics to shine through, I don't know why, but I apply this on the top part of the backpack and certain parts where I think players will touch the model and grab it. So this is just an extra layer of protection to parts of it. We don't want to varnish the entire model because it'll kind of ruin it and there are parts that are just not going to be touched by people. 
I then apply AK Interactive Ultra Matte to the purity seals to make them look more papery or clothy. And then with Mephiston Red, Ungor Flesh, Warpstone Glow, and Dawnstone, we're going to paint the little heraldric shield on him. First we're going to paint a portion of this Mephiston Red. And then we will paint the other side Ungor Flesh. And then Dawnstone to cover the other side. I already did the Warpstone Glow on the other side, I forgot to film that. And then with a very fine brush, I then use Abaddon Black to straighten lines and create lines on this, uh, on this little heraldry. In order to highlight these shields, I couldn't really highlight them, so what I did was I took some Nuln Oil and then I applied them to the lower half of each of the heraldry in order to add shading to them. And then I eventually did a second coat of this, but I really got piss poor footage of this, so you're not going to see that. And the Blade Guard Ancient is done. Alright, I give myself a... 7 out of 10 on this model. I did some things good, I did some things not so good, and some things just fell apart in the end. First thing I did good, obviously, that cloak. That cloak looks good, except for the part on his right knee is not as good with the shading and stuff. But apart from that, the cloak looks good. The, gold, uh, the Vallejo Metallics, using all of them together to create highlights and stuff, that looks pretty good. The other things I did pretty good was I was able to do a very good free handing of the Black Templar symbol. I'm really proud of that. Actually, you know what? I'm changing my score. 8 out of 10. I did way too many things right. And a few and the few things that were wrong. Well, so what I did wrong was after it took a while, but eventually I figured it out is look at his helmet. Look at his helmet as it sticks on him. The I don't know how to say it, but the armor that guards his neck and the helmet, the way it looks, is like it's a mesh. You can't really pick out his helmet from the area around it, which I guess is good for him when dealing with snipers, but I doubt that any sniper that could snipe them would have trouble picking out his helmet. But essentially, his head is not that distinct from his armor uh, around his neck. So what I would have done, now looking back, is I would have taken his helmet and I would have painted it uh, probably white or red or something like that. Something distinctly different so you could clearly see it. Because his head seems to just disappear in the imagery. But apart from that, that's pretty good. That's a pretty good piece. I'm really pleased with the uh, body and skull up top. I'm pleased with how the model turned out. I'm pleased with the cloak. I'm pleased with the free hand. I'm pleased with how all the medals. The model, yeah, I'll give it a solid 8 out of 10. I did way too many things good. It could have been a 9, but nope. Well, alright then. So, like the video if you like the video. Subscribe if you want to see more. I'm still knocking out that Indominus box set. Next is the Chaplain. Primaris Chaplain. Alright, I'll see you then. Bye.